vinyl, another episode, imagine that. I am your host, Cosmic Brian, trying to spread the, the religion of music throughout the galaxy and to all planets nearby. Man, join me in my quest. I'm so glad y'all are here, man. We are going back into the garage, yes. I'm a freaking mechanic, I'm spending so much time in the garage right now. <laughs> All right, yes, you have arrived. Cosmic Vinyl is your friend. All right, you got, hey, check this out. I'm rocking a CD. Don't go getting all up your panties in a fucking bundle. This CD was given to me by my good friends down at uh, the one, the only, Planet Score record shop down here in the St. Louis area. Uh, Tim, uh, one of the compadres down there at, uh, at Planet Score, this was his old band, a, a garage band called Tomorrow's Caveman, and it's called Today! See, it's got, a, it's got an exclamation point, so it's Today! Freaking, this is so killer. Listen to it, man. Tomorrow's caveman. Listen to that. Yeah, go, go, go. yeah, it's fucking fantastic, man. I guess we're good enough friends now down there that they can they're hooking me up with a little CD action. Man, I would love to have seen those guys live. That would have been killer. Uh, so yeah, welcome aboard, Cosmonauts. Um, man, this is going to be a good show. Uh, if you dig garage punk, if you dig punk, uh, you're going to be into this, man. Because uh, here, let me just make a little, make myself just a little taller here. All right, woo! I'm excited, man. So I got a couple of things to kind of get out of the way here, real quick. I need to give major, major props to a couple of VC members uh, that I'm sure you all know and love. Uh, one of those is Garner at Born Out of Time, uh, fantastic channel, uh, and also Randy at Dead Wax. Uh, those guys are like the premier garage guys here in the vinyl community. And I was taking part in one of Garner's live streams not too god awful long ago, and they turned me on to this, this Bible of garage rock. It's called the Knights of Fuzz. It's uh, the new garage and psychedelic music explosion. Look at that cover. That's just great. Um, this was written by one Timothy Gasson, um, who's not only a, a big fan of garage rock music, uh, new and old, but he's also part of this movement, this uh, 80s revival movement. He plays in a band called the uh, Marshmallow Overcoat. What a great name for a band, a garage band. But yeah, um, he put together this. This is an, uh, one of the newer editions here. This is 500 pages uh, documenting about every garage revival band known to man from like the 80s uh, through the 90s and into the 2000s. But um, as you can see on the back, here's some of the ba uh, band's album covers. Higher State, Plastic Land, Chesterfield Kings, who we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, the Satelliters, Fuzz Tones, Sick Rose. This is, uh, man, I've already started to empty my pocketbook finding stuff within the pages the hallowed pages of this book I'll show you that it has they're listed in alphabetical order and it's got you know the band name and then some of them have a picture of the band it's got all their output like from demos to EPs cassettes uh, and onto their long players as well um, man, I, I, I'm so glad you guys turned me on to this. I thank you so much, Garner and Randy, because this is uh, a great reference if, for anybody who loves garage rock music. Um, so yeah, thanks a bunch. Pick it up. I got it for like 20 bucks. I know there's still some on eBay, too, for a good price. So um, yeah, check it out. 
Um, so yeah, you guys want to get into some uh, like uh, neo garage or garage revival stuff? Let's get the fuck going, hey, then, man. Chug. Like a, oh, what is that? Big chug. Did I hear somebody out there hollering for a big chug? You got it, sir. When somebody requests a big chug or anything else from Cosmic Brian, I I deliver. I will deliver. I got a, boo, a brew. It's already cracked. It's not quite a freshie, but it's it's near mint. <laughs> it's it's a VG plus plus. So yeah, if you guys want to hoist it up with me and throw it down the hatch, let's get this thing done. Here we go. Oh yes, yes, my good friend, of course. Oh, taken like a true superhero, right? A, a cosmic hero. All right, let's get into this. Um, flying out of the gate like a bat out of friggin' hell. It's uh, the Chesterfield Kings, Night of the Living Eyes. Um, this is a Rochester, New York garage punk band. Um, these guys were one of the, the premier uh, garage revivalist bands from the late 70s and early 80s. These guys basically started the scene uh, of the garage re uh, revival. Um, this And this album documents uh, their releases, a uh, collection of singles from uh, 1979 through 1983. Uh, a couple of these tracks have never even been on wax before. So this is a first. Uh, there's the back cover there, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. <coughs> but a couple of the songs that appear on here for the first time are some of their original singles. One of them is called I Ain't No Miracle Worker, and the other one's called Exit Nine. Uh, just fantastic garage, early uh, 80s garage revival stuff. <coughs> Um, authentic uh, fuzz guitar and farfisa organ filled goodness right here. Uh, snotty vocals, uh, full of garage punk swagger that we all love. Uh, there's a studio side and a live side. Um, this is just great, man. Um, there's a couple pictures of like their sing their first singles there, which man to lay hands on those would be ooh, 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 I like the mula. Uh, and this comic right here, kind of reminiscent of the old uh, uh, Blues Magoos uh, electric comic book. But yeah, this is uh, pretty damn cool. It's a uh, it documents uh, one like them blowing off a band rehearsal just just to go get a bite to eat. It's funny. Um, but yeah, this is great. Look at the collage artwork on the front. Some of the still photos from like shows and a bunch of flyers and whatnot. Uh, this is a great, if you, if you like the Chesterfield Kings and you want to check out their early stuff, this is a great one to start with. And then, um, not to be outdone, uh, this is Plan 9 and it's called Frustration. Uh, this was released in 1982 on Vox Records, V-O-X-X. -X. Um, Vox is a division of uh, Bop Records, so if you go to the Bop site, I'm sure there's a, a spot to look for records from Vox, but oh yeah, this is a great, this is an EP release uh, by this Rhode Island garage punker band. These guys, I mean, if you look at the back there, look at how many members. There's no less than eight members in this band, which is basically unheard of for a garage rock band. Um, I mean, but these guys kind of played by their own rules, as, you, as I'll explain here as we go through Plan 9 Frustration. Uh, this is a bit of a heavier sound to the garage revival scene. It's intense garage punk with like a 1966 sound. Would have fit right into that era of music. Um, uh, it's an EP that has one side that is a 12 minute uh, song. Uh, it's called um, Frustration, the title track. 
uh, it's basically a cover of a band song called, they're, uh, called Painted Ship. Uh, again, uh, very uncharacteristic of a garage rock band to do a 12 minute jam. I mean, most of them are, you know, like just like the regular punk rock is two minutes and then they're done, right? But yeah, and also uh, something a little different is the guitar solos are so ripping and roaring, and but they're almost technical and modern, uh, which is again different from the usual garage fodder. Uh, this this is great. The, uh, if, I, you guys got to check this out. And if you do look into this band, uh, get this one, this EP of Frustration, or the other one that I'm still looking for, their long player called Dealing with the Dead. Fantastic uh, garage rock right there. Plan 9. Now this one I knew nothing about. I took a chance on it because I had seen it at one of the record stores down here. Don't tell the guys at Planet Score, but I was I was digging around in vintage vinyl and I found this garage punker. Uh, and the reason I figured out that it was a garage rock is it's on the Dionysus label, which release a lot of garage rock material. So I just blind bought it, man. And it was cheap, so I mean, I no big deal but these guys are called the hate bombs and this is called hunt you down it was released in 1999 on the dionysus label as i've already explained but they're an orlando florida band that are carrying the garage punk torch uh through the 90s uh these guys apparently put on an amazing live show and that's mostly what they were known for is they toured through the the southeast states of the good old U.S. of A. I love that, like, pinup cover. I mean, check her out, right? Let's hunt her down, man. I'm starting to get a little bit of a chub a little bit. My gun is almost in full... S no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going to get hate mail in the comments now. But this is garage punk pop uh, rock insanity right here. Um, not a lot of fuzzy guitar, but there are, so there is some great playing here. Uh, some sloppy, ripping guitar soloing. Uh, maybe even a little bit of rockabilly tinge to this. Some surf a little bit. There's a picture of the, of uh, like a illustration of the band there. Kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it kind of reminds me of like a lesser produced, like the Hives which I consider to be a garage punk band. I don't know about you, the Swedish band, The Hives. They're a killer band, by the way. But th these guys kind of sound like that a little bit. But um, yeah, check this out. It's mostly all original material. Uh, they do have a, a, a couple of standouts on here. The title track, Hunt You Down, is great. There's a song called Love Like That that's kind of Beatlesque. Uh, and then there's another one called Until Tomorrow that is just scorching garage rock. So yeah, check it out. Hate Bombs, hunt you down. Man, if you don't check out some of this music, I'm going to hunt you down. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with you because I can't even beat my way out of a wet paper bag most times. Didn't tell you, but on February 12th, I turned 57 friggin' years old. Yeah. I'm an old mug bug nurse. I'm just kidding, but I did, yeah. Anyway, check this out. The Undertakers. Now, these guys, if you look at the cover there, they don't have the typical uh, gr 60s garage rocker look. In fact, you've got like an 80s, like new wave looking guys here. You got a guy that looks like Carlos Cavazzo from friggin' Quiet Riot and a couple other guys there. But this is, this is cool. Uh, it's called The Greatest Stories Ever Told. It was released in 85 on the Midnight International label. Uh, these guys are a Swedish garage punk alt rock uh, uh, pop band. Um, heavy on the punk part of this. These guys are very punky. I used this as an intro to one of my last videos. Uh, 60s guitar with some fuzz. 
uh, some bluesiness to some of the songs here, and also some uh, sloppy Ramones type punk rock on this as well. Uh, I mean, how do you go wrong with that? I mean, come on, Vinyl Community. Kind of a paisley looking background here with the songs, but um, there's a trashy version of the song uh, I want to come back from the world of LSD that opens uh, this album. Uh, really good, good take on that tune. Um, probably the standout track on this record. Uh, I wouldn't call this pure garage rock, uh, but I'll tell you what, I dig it. I fucking dig it, my own community. You gotta check the Undertakers out. All right, a uh, couple more here. This one, as I, I was so excited to get, and when I got it, I was just slightly disappointed. Not in the songs or the talent of the band, but this is the Grave Digger 5. Now, I discovered this band just strictly through browsing YouTube videos. Um, this was released in 87 on the Vox label. Uh, they're a crazy freaking garage punk band from San Diego, California. Uh, they were part of the 80s garage revival scene. These guys were wild as... I mean, I'm not even kidding. On the video that I checked out, uh, the singer, Leighton uh, Koizumi, uh, you know, he, he definitely has the look like of a, a 60s garage uh, lead singer. But he peels his shirt off uh, and during the song, I think it's uh, Night of the Phantom, the cover. And he peels his shirt off, he unscrews the microphone from the mic stand, and he just starts raking it across his uh, bare chest, and he's jabbing it into his gut. I don't know if he's like trying to be Iggy, you know, when Iggy did that kind of thing with the peanut butter, the glass. I think he cut himself one time with glass, but um, it's pretty wild. I'm going to put a, I'm going to actually put a link to some of the videos from a lot of these bands in the description so you can check them out. But I freaking love this band. Um, during the recording of their debut record called uh, All Black and Hairy, <laughs> what a great title. Uh, these guys basically lived in their car outside the studio. Five guys, one car. And they basically survived on, um, you know, these probably raunchy hot dogs from this local convenience store. Which, back in the day when we were banding it and rocking out in the 80s in, in Dallas, Texas, we budgeted most of our money for clubbing and you know, drinking and whatever else we could lay hands on. But we did set aside, a, a, you know, a, for nutrition, a couple of bucks. We'd go down to the local 7-Eleven, pick up what we called the death dogs or death tubes. Um, and we would load these son of a bitch and hot dogs up with like cheese sauce, uh, chili, re all the condiments, relish, onions, and we just, it was like two for a buck, and we lived off those for a while, unless you got a girl to take you out to dinner or whatever. But anyway, it uh, caused much, much gastrointestinal uh, issues the following day when, after you piled tons of beer in on top of it. But yeah, uh, so I could kind of relate to what these guys were going through, but... Um, this, all of their material, including this album, was released after the band broke up. Um, the singer, uh, and here's why I think the singer left from what I've read. This actually sounds kind of shitty. Um, I mean, the music part isn't bad, but the vocals sound like it was recorded like two rooms over, but the mic was still in the main room. And... I think uh, Leighton, the singer, took issue with that, with the producer and the record company. He said, fuck it, and left the band. He went on to form another band called The Morlocks, uh, which I have an album covering coming from them, which is going to be much better. 
but it's too bad because this could have been so, so good. There's a studio side to this and a live side. And the live side is probably a better representation of how the band actually sounded. But uh, yeah, check out the Gravedigger 5. I'll put a link to the video that I was talking about. You guys can check it out yourself. Um, this is the last album here, and this is a damn fucking fine piece of garage punk. This is The Scientist Weird Love, released, uh, I believe, 2020 or 2021 on the Numero Group uh, label uh, that puts out some killer, killer albums. They put out that Acid Nightmares and that uh, Scorch uh, album that, with all that uh, great uh, killer hard rock site that I showed you. Um, but yeah, this is, this is like swampy garage punk dark uh kind of crampish even so at some points um but i'm going to read you the hype sticker there's going to be a, a a mind shield removal here so uh cover your eyes you do not want me to see inside your soul and you definitely don't want to look into my what lies behind my eyes you don't understand there's danger and peril within you may not come out sane. I'm just kidding, but here goes. Mind shield removal imminent. Oh my god! Oh shit! What am I doing? What have I done? Ah. Anyway, let me read this to you. Um, unhinged Aussie garage uh, or grunge captured just as the scientists were imploding, attempting to explode. Recorded over three days in February of 1986, Weird Love is the band's last ditch effort in, uh, to bring their bad vibes to bedrooms across the world over. Uh, a colossal failure and brilliant mistake that sounds best when blaring out of a 1982 Corolla's blown Alpine speakers. I love that description. Man, back in the day, everybody that listened to, you know, rock some cassettes in their car always had an Alpine stereo. And it just rocked. I had the party van with all that in it. Anyway, we're not talking about me. We're talking about the scientists. But, yeah, too bad they couldn't stick together, man, because they're a great band. Um, but, you know, bands break up over musical differences and drugs or whatever. So... But anyway, Vinyl Community, um, that's my garage effort. It's all for you. All for you, people. Um, I love you guys, man. Hey, if you like what you've heard and seen here and you want to you wanna assist me in spreading the gospel of uh, rock and roll throughout the universe, then subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Me and the Perch will let you in. We'll let you know. Man, we are pushing to reach a thousand strong uh, to help us in our quest. Uh, we're at about 720, so without your help, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I don't see any shame and I'm um, trying to, you know, uh, put it out there that we want people to watch us and we want people to subscribe to us. Hey, it's no different than uh, doing a contest to, you know, push to a certain amount. Of, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I, this is the way I choose to do it. This is the way the cosmic one chooses. If you have a problem with it, then... No, I'm just kidding. Hey, you guys, here's a toast to you, man. Cheers, Vinyl Community. You guys... Uh, sh stay cool, stay cosmic, share music with the rest of us when you discover it, man. We're always, everybody's always looking for some good tunage. Um, and you guys have been great. I appreciate everyone that tunes in. Have a good one, guys. It's Cosmic Vinyl.